Hey guys, now we're back talking about our graph. We put aggregate demand on pause for a little bit, and now we're going back to the aggregate supply and demand graph, and where we need to talk about the other part of that graph, aggregate supply. And if you remember what the graph looked like from the very beginning, it had aggregate demand, and that was downward sloping, but then it had two other lines, both named aggregate supply one of them being short run, the other one being long run. Well, you just saw Mr. Clifford go over the short run aggregate supply curve and how it was upward sloping. He might have drawn more of a straight line. You can draw it a little curvy like this or a straight like, like a 45 degree angle. Um, either way, they're both correct. It's just uh, based on your, you know, what you want to do. But then there's also this long run aggregate supply curve. Just to recap, the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping just like this. Remember, like you could draw it like this, or you can draw it curvy, doesn't matter. And it is upward sloping, meaning that there is a positive relationship um, between the price level and real GDP. Um, it's, it's slow, but it is a positive relationship. It's slow to go up, meaning when prices increase, GDP will increase slowly but eventually it will increase. And there's two reasons why that happens. Price stickiness, which we've talked about before. Um, prices are slow to adjust. It takes a while for people either to change their prices at stores or for to just filter down through the entire economy. And so prices eventually like go up and GDP will eventually increase and misperceptions. Sometimes as a business owner, the prices of your resource change. And so it's more expensive for you to produce but you might not raise prices right away because you don't really know where that price came from. Did the is this the like a temporary new high price, like uh, with toilet paper that we saw um, during the pandemic, or is this like going to just be a generally high price that you see things like uh, you see that with oil prices where they increase and then they stay that way for a really long time, and so eventually they'll raise their prices um, to compensate for these higher input prices, but maybe not right away. Long run aggregate supply, on the other hand, is completely vertical. And I want you to understand that this long run aggregate supply curve is exactly the same as the PPF curve. Long run aggregate supply shows how much what is possible to produce in the long run. It doesn't necessar necessarily say how much we're producing right now. That's what short run does. Short run aggregate supply curve is basically like, this is how much our production is right now long run shows us what it could possibly be in the long run. And so look at these graphs right here. I have point A, point C, or point A, point P, and point C in all these three graphs. Our long run aggregate supply curve, our PPF curve, and our business cycle down here. And all A points represent the same information. All B points represent the same information. And all C points represent the same information. Well, like point A, everyone's fully employed, we're in a period of expansion, we're using all of our resources efficiently, we're on the long run aggregate supply curve. Point B is outside of our PPF curve, maybe it's just not possible, like a peak is not sustainable over the long course of time, that's why it's a peak. And B is just outside of our LRS, it's past uh, what our real GDP should be, it's just at a point that is just not sustainable over time. And point C, well, that's inside our PPF curve. We're not using all of our resources efficiently, maybe because we're in a recession or a trough, and we're just not reaching our full potential. So think of like LRIS, long run aggregate supply curve, as being the, the best. It's, our, it's you're reaching your potential and something that you can maintain for a long amount of time. C, you're not there. A, you are there. And B, you're too past it. Um, too far past it, it's just not sustainable. In the uh, in the video that you just watched with Mr. Clifford, he might have given you a list over the supply shifts. This is how I'm going to illustrate the supply shifts, how I'm going to talk about them. He might have used different words than I do, but these are the things that shift short run aggregate supply. Short run aggregate supply. The reason that they we're not gonna shift long run aggregate supply in this class it does shift like it does. But if we're going to talk about long run economic growth, we're going to illustrate it on a PPF curve, not on LRAS. There will be times 
when there's questions on the AP test or on my tests where I say like, what happens to long run aggregate supply in the long run? And it'll be like a multiple choice question or a question with words. And you'll say like, it increases and shifts to the right or it decreases and shifts to the left. But we're never gonna draw it um, because if we were to draw it, we're gonna draw it on a PPF curve, not on long run aggregate supply. And the reason we do that is because we never put numbers to our price level GDP. Like we don't number these axes. And so like having a shift doesn't really signify, doesn't really show too much unless there's actual numbers there, which we don't put. So that's why we don't draw it on the aggregate supply demand graph. We'll draw it on the PDF curve graph. But short run, short run aggregate supply totally shifts. And here are the shifters. It's night P, N-I-T-E, night P. <laughs> Uh, number of sellers, more sellers, more supply, less sellers, less supply. Input prices. This one's tricky. People tend to think like, oh, higher input prices, more supply. No, higher input prices makes it more expensive to produce. Therefore, you can't produce as much. If pepperonis and cheese and dough is more expensive, you make fewer pizzas because you can't buy as many ingredients as you could have. So higher input prices decreases aggregate supply, lower input prices, increases aggregate supply. Technology, more technology, more supply, less technology, less supply. And same thing with productivity. And then expectations of future prices is always a question that tricks people up, but it never should, because whatever you expect will happen. So if the question says, producers expect future prices to fall, then they will. And if they say future, uh, producers expect future prices to be higher, then your curve will shift. So prices will be higher. And the reason is this, let's say I sell ice cream and I expect my future prices of ice cream to triple. Like I could sell ice cream now for a dollar or I could sell ice cream next week for $3. I hear that whatever is going to happen, ice cream is going to be super expensive, which is the thing that I sell in a few weeks. Well, I'm not going to supply a whole bunch now when I can just keep all my resources and then supply it like later at that higher price. Of course, if I cut my supply of ice cream production now because I'm waiting for the higher price and, and more profit, well, me cutting supply now decreases aggregate supply, shifts it to the left, and raises prices. That's the very thing that raised the prices was expectations of prices. So whenever it talks about expectations of future prices, the answer is in the question. If they expect prices to fall, shift it to where aggregate supply makes prices fall. If they expect prices to go up, shift it to where prices go up as your answer. And so here is, um, here is just what it looks like for aggregate supply to shift to the left and right. Left, um, going to the left, is this little green arrow to the left. Increasing supply is going to the uh, right. I don't like that they have green being less and red being more, but um, but whatever. So, it, but it does explain it right here. So we're gonna do some practice questions um, and I'll let you guys uh, solve these. Uh, which of the following describes aggregate supply curve in the long run? Well, long run aggregate supply is that vertical line. So it's always vertical. Which of the following factors will shift aggregate supply curve to the right? Well, to the right means more production, more supply, and an increase in productivity will do that. Um, if you increase wages of workers, that means you have to pay your workers more, which means you can't have as many workers. If I, if I was paying, you know, 10 people $50 an hour, now I have to pay them $100 an hour, I can't afford 10 people, which means fewer workers, fewer work being done. An increase in government regulations is going to decrease aggregate supply. And consumer income, that's going to shift aggregate demand, not aggregate supply. So it is A. Set or asparagus or other, ooh, hello, other things equal. A shift of the aggregate supply curve to the left involves all of the following except meaning they're all going to shift aggregate supply to the left except for which one. 
it should be B, a decrease in workers' wages. If you pay your workers less, you can hire more workers. This is a change of input prices. Wage is an input price. If you are a business owner, you have to pay your workers. It's like buying pepperoni and buying cheese. You have to buy workers. So if you pay them less, then you can have more workers and produce more. All the other things will either uh, will shift aggregate supply to the left. You have to more government regulation that can't be as productive. Less labor force, there's less works, less work being done. They have to pay more in taxes, that leaves less money to buy resources. And obviously a de decrease in productivity decreases production. Ah, stagflation. Stagflation is a type of aggregate supply shift. It is a certain direction. So um, stagflation occurs when? Okay, so stagflation has the keyword inflation in it. So, uh, so see if you can figure it out. So stagflation occurs when aggregate supply, short and aggregate supply shifts to the left. So this is like, there's a word for that. Aggregate supply goes left, that's stagflation, where we have higher prices and lower GDP. And another way to say that is a negative shock. So a negative shock is a, sh is a shift to the left. A positive shock is a shift to the right. Um, aggregate demand changing does not cause stagflation, only when aggregate supply. So supply S, stagflation S. And that is, uh, that is shifting aggregate supply. You're gonna do some practice in a little bit. I hope you are feeling uh, well. There's no way for me to know um, in this format, uh, but you can always comment and leave a message and I'll get back to you. Have a great day.